Hi guys, this is Maverick Pua, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss the suggested solution for 2019 A-Levels H2 Chemistry, Paper 1, Question 28. Alright, Question 28 goes something like this. We have chemotrypsin. It's an enzyme that hydrolyzes protein into smaller peptides and amino acids. It specifically hydrolyzes the peptide bond on the carboxyl side of a residue that contains an aromatic ring. So for example, the pentapeptide W produces only three compounds, X, Y, and Z. X and Y are dipeptides. So the pentapeptide W is here. And under chemotrypsin, we are given three different fragments. So let's look at the activity of chemotrypsin. Now the question mentioned that the chemotrypsin will attack or hydrolyze the peptide bond on the carboxyl side of a residue that contains an aromatic ring. Now, the carboxyl side of a residue will be the acid portion because I know that for a polypeptide, the polypeptide that we can find in proteins, it is in a very predictable repeat unit. So let me draw out the repeat unit. The first position will be position N, which represents the amine. Then this will have hydrogen. Then the second position will be a carbon with a hydrogen and and R group. The third position will be the acid group, C double bond O group. So this is the repeat unit for a polypeptide that we can find in a protein. So typically what I will do is when I'm given a polypeptide, I need to determine the repeat unit of this amine, carbon with an R group and an acid group. So I'll number each of these position. I'll label the amine as position one. I'll label the carbon with the R group as position two and I'll label the acid group as position 3. So if the question tells me that I have a pentapeptide W, then what I will do first is I will try to look out for my position 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 5 times because altogether this pentapeptide is made up of 5 amino acids joined together. Then after that, we will consider the activity of chemotrypsin which is targeting the acid side or the carboxyl side of a residue that contains the aromatic ring. But let's find out the position 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 in W first. It is actually written here. Remember what we do is position 1, we look out for the amine functional group. So we should be here. Position 2 is the carbon with the R group. Position 3 will be the acid group. And we continue this. This is the amine position 1, carbon with the R group position 2, acid group position 3, amine R group acid, amine R group acid, amine R group, then this is my acid group. So this will be my position 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, all the way to here. This will be the polypeptide main chain. And the next thing we want to do is chemotrypsin targets the carboxyl side of the residue that contains an aromatic ring. So it doesn't break all the peptide bonds. You only target the peptide bond where I have an R group that has an aromatic ring. So what we will do is we will run this through and then we systematically run through which of these R groups has a aromatic ring or benzene ring. Then the peptide bond at the acid portion will be broken. So if I run this through, if I look at this position one, position two, this is an R group, but it doesn't have a benzene ring. So chemotrypsin will leave this alone. So it doesn't target this peptide bond. So the second peptide, we notice here, I have a benzene here. So this is the aromatic group. So chemotrypsin will target this guy. What you will do is, according to the question, you will break the peptide bond on the carboxyl side of the residue. So you will target this acid group and you will break the peptide at this acid group. That's why I draw this bond here. This bond will be broken. Then if we continue, this is the third R group, no benzene. So we'll leave this alone. The next R group, I have a benzene here. So this is my aromatic group. So what the chemotrypsin will do is you'll target the acid group here, break the peptide bond here. Then I'm left with this fragment and the products more or less we can figure out. So if I look at the products given inside this question, you notice very nicely it is consistent with what we have deduced. This first fragment will be this piece here, these two amino acids joined together, or we call this the dipeptide. So this will be my X. Then these two peptides joined together, this will be my Y. And then this last fragment here, this is one amino acid by itself. So this will be my Z. So this X is considered a dipeptide. This Y is considered a dipeptide. 
this Z is considered an amino acid. So it is consistent with what the question is mentioning, X and Y are dipeptide. So we use this to try to more or less understand how chemotrypsin functions, then we want to apply this to the four options. So the question is asking which of the four tetrapeptides on page 15 will form two different dipeptides when hydrolyzed by chemotrypsin. So we have to look at each of these options. And then the same idea, right? We will have to consider first thing, what is my main chain? That means my position 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Then after that, what we do is we look out for the aromatic R group and we break the bond on that carboxylic acid. So let us run this through part by part. Option A, the main chain is here. Amine R group acid, amine R group acid, amine R group acid, amine R group acid. So this will be my position 1, 2, 3. Then the next thing is we look out for the R group. So this R group, no benzene. So we will leave this alone. Chemotrypsin will not target this guy. This is a second R group. Don't have benzene. So we will leave this alone. The third R group is here. The aromatic group is here. So the chemotrypsin will target this guy. You break this bond here at the acid side. Then this guy is one amino acid by itself. So if I consider this permutation, I will end up with a tripeptide plus an amino acid. Because these three amino acids join together, this is my tripeptide plus one amino acid. So A is not the answer. We actually want two dipeptides. Then how about B? Now B, again, this is the main chain. Amine R group acid, amine R group acid, amine R group acid, amine R group acid. My position one, two, three will be here. Then what we do is again, we look out for the R group and we see which one has an aromatic R group. So this one, no benzene. We will leave this alone. This guy, it is an aromatic R group. So the chemotrypsin will target the acid group here. So this bond will be broken. The next one is also an aromatic group. Benzene is here. So chemotrypsin will target this bond here. And then this will be the products. So what we will end up with is we will end up with dipeptide. These two join together. Number one followed by number two. This guy is one amino acid. This guy is the second amino acid. So if I am subjecting B to chemotrypsin, the outcome will be one dipeptide and two amino acids. Then if I look at C, now for C, what we have is same thing. This is the main chain. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Then same thing. I look at the aromatic R groups. The first group, there's no benzene. So we will leave this alone. Second R group, there's a benzene here. So the enzyme will target this acid carbon here, break this peptide bond. So I have one fragment here, which is a dipeptide number one, to number two. So this is the first dipeptide. Then the second guy, this is a R group, no benzene. So the enzyme will leave this alone. Then this will be a benzene, yes, but on the right hand side, there's no more peptide bond. This is already an acid group. So the outcome is we will have another dipeptide. So option C will give me a total of two dipeptides. Then finally, if I look at D, D, again, this is the main chain. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, all the way towards the right hand side. The first R group is already uh, benzene. So the enzyme will target this bond here. So I'll have one amino acid here. Then the second R group again has another benzene. So the enzyme will target this bond here. I'll form another amino acid. Then followed by this R group has no benzene. So the enzyme will leave this bond alone. Then this guy also has no R group, but this side is already my acid group. So we can leave this alone. So the product that we will end up having is, I have one amino acid here, two amino acids, and this is a dipeptide. Number one joined to number two. So the outcome will be two amino acids and one dipeptide. Again, the question wants, which of these options will give me two times dipeptide? So if I run through options A, B, C, and D, then of course the answer will be option C. All right, so that was the discussion involving question 28. Now question 28 is a little bit tedious. So we have to look at the information given in the question based on the enzyme activity that is given in the question. Then we will have to systematically break down my polypeptide and see which of the options will give me the fragments that is being requested inside the question. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.